More crocs turn up, waiting for the big event. But with temperatures soaring and winds blasting over 50 kilometers an hour, this island is a punishing place for visitors, especially for nesting turtles. As afternoon temperatures top 40 degrees, they emerge, first one by one, and then in their dozens. Most other sea turtles would simply cook if they attempted this. It's even too hot for the crocs. The giant reptilians are at the mercy of tiny biting insects. six kilometers of beach, but in the search for the perfect nest site, some turtles become disorientated. This female is lost, far in the island's interior. She's completely exhausted. Her life ends on the island where she was born. Crab Island Arena is hotting up. Most females will nest two or three more times this season. These warm sands are now incubating thousands of nests. Crab Island is the largest and most important flatback nesting site in the world. That's because it's cut off. The only way other predators can reach the island is to cross treacherous water. and the crocs are about to take it on. The ones moving down river have now reached the coast. One of the most perilous parts of the journey starts right here, at the mouth of the Jardine River. A male has made a pit stop on the southern side. He's been here for a day, calculating his next move. He won't go back. There's too much at stake. He waits for the ocean currents to shift in his favor and then strikes out for Crab Island. He's not the only one to mobilize. Others head out, from the Scarden, the Jackson, Crystal Creek, and the Jardine Rivers, and into the ocean. Turtles are returning to Crab Island after 20 years at sea, but the next few hours will be some of the most dangerous of their lives. Nesting season is in full swing. 
and wave upon wave of turtles will nest day and night. In the next 24 hours alone, as many as 500 flatbacks will lay their eggs on the island. What happens on Crab Island at night has been a complete mystery until now. Special cameras, able to film in moon and starlight, allow us to see much further into the pitch black than ever before. For the first time, revealing the full drama of Crab Island's darkest hours. The Salties, so relaxed on the beach by day, switch to hunt mode. Croc's jaws are clamped, steel tight. She could still escape if he repositions his jaws to get a better grip. But the chance passes. This turtle hunter knows just what to do. He takes her into deeper water to drown her. It's now the island's extraordinary inner secret begins to unfold. It's been over three months since the first major wave of flatbacks nested and the turtles are launching a comeback. Some of these youngsters burst out of their eggs two days ago, but they've been waiting underground for all their siblings to hatch. It's all for one and one for all. This will only work as a great escape. Vegetation, like perimeter wire, is the first obstacle. Spurred on by their brothers and sisters, 30 more hatchlings pour out of the nest. But things wait for them in the dark. Hungry things. A night guard of birds, rufous night herons and black neck storks are ready to take aim. Storks are like grim reapers, dispatching hatchlings methodically and with ease. But the stork is slow, and while it's engrossed with their siblings, several youngsters make it to freedom. It will simply search and destroy it elsewhere. The female turtle is now dead. But only a massively strong croc can dismember her. Unfortunately, he's being harassed for his prize. Not just by his arch enemies, but by other crocs. stay close, very close, keeping him under pressure. But by holding his ground, he hangs onto his meal. A 
A Salty's death roll is the best way to tear a big turtle limb from limb. What started as a conflict over food turns into something far more intriguing. A smaller croc approaches, very warily. And then something very surprising happens. The large male exposes his soft underbelly to the other salty. He must feel totally confident the other croc won't attack. Could it be a she? More astonishing, he lets the other croc feed on his turtle. It's incredibly rare behaviour. With its head deep in the shell, this croc can't defend itself. Maybe it knows it's safe. Could this mean the Crab Island crocs are more than just collections of random individuals? It's possible they are paired up, or even related. The idea of salties in families hasn't been explored before. The crocs visiting Crab Island could be communicating and socialising with one another in ways we've never imagined. The island is revealing salties in a whole new light. And there are even more surprises to come. Out in the Torres Straits, the full reptilian force is on its way. Long sea journeys are hard going, but they're efficient swimmers. The crocs surf the currents, harnessing the power of the ocean. Instead of fighting ripping currents, they wait them out. They can rest on the sea floor for over an hour before having to surface to breathe. Their powerful tails help them commute at around two kilometers per hour. Bony plates on their backs act as solar panels, keeping them going. Inbuilt croc GPS keeps them on course. It's the first time crocs have been tracked from different rivers around the Cape and across the Straits. And now we know they're all converging on one place. stage is set. All the major players have arrived. This is the calm before the storm. It's been so 